Hello, welcome to OpenGL Demo Episode 8, where we are working on shaders and doing all kinds of cool things with shaders. So next up we are going to get into some projection matrices and just projecting images around on the screen. So that way you can take, in theory, any effect that you want and render it to whatever set of triangles you want and put it anywhere on the screen. As you can see here, I got a little algorithm going on a rotating plane. And this is essentially what you do. You just apply different algorithms all over the place, wherever you need them, and just build them in your shaders. So to do all of this, uh, we're just going to go ahead and walk through the code. I've basically just added a whole new shader setup, which is right here. And we are now using a vertice, which takes some projection variables and you can find that right here it takes a projection matrix model matrix and a view matrix times them all together in this order and here's how we color that frag this is one of the algorithms from that website the book of shaders and I've just made a few changes to it. I added runtime, so we do set that, and just made a little variation on the noise based on the runtime. So all these randoms are different. And that's what gives it that back and forth wishy-washy you see on this square. It's hard to kind of tell why it's rotating, but we can do some editing here and make it so it doesn't rotate. So of course there's the shader and all it being set up and everything being set. If you walk through that, it should all make sense. And of course, also, we have to make sure the callbacks are up to date. So when the window size changes, we want to make sure we update that shader as well. And now let's go down to our while loop. You can see here we do our whole set everything and then draw a strip and this is where we're doing the rotate we're using glm functions there's other stuff you can do but you can go look up these functions on glm about rotate translate scale and you can set that however you want so for example if we just turn this off you'll see that it no longer rotates it's just sitting there And that's what that random variation does. I think it's pretty cool. Reminds me of like an ocean. So you could potentially reuse this type of effect for water or something like that. To fully understand projection, you're going to have to do a lot of research. It's a pretty big topic on its own. It's basically used to kind of map out squares or areas uh, I'm, I'm butchering the explanation Khan Academy has some great courses on it it's used for shadow mapping and some other things in 3d I'm honestly not an expert on it I've done some of the courses but I still have a lot to learn too I'm mostly just applying it here and giving a very brief overview of it the view matrix we're not actually using yet but this is what we will, well, I say we're not using it, it's here. It's just a plain old identity matrix. So it's not actually doing anything. When you multiply it by an identity matrix, it doesn't change the result. So we're not actually using it yet, but I put it in here as preparation because this is what we will change when we start moving around and rotating our camera. So the, our camera is just in place right now, just looking down the z-axis. So it's looking down the negative z, because of course we are in the right-handed coordinate system. And to make that plane smaller, I did set the projection and then just translated it backwards or down the mod negative z. So field of view is 45, but we can play around with this if we want. Now I do have this also in the callback too. 
and it makes it look further away. So that's generally how you scope in. If you want to like zoom way in, you just make this really tiny. Like 12 will look pretty zoomed in. There we go. So your field of view kind of does determine how far it looks like you are away from things. Uh, I think 45 is what they say approximately humans see like. So I tend to start with that. But a lot of FPS games and stuff will allow you to adjust this. Other changes that were made since the last video. I turned the shaders into unique pointers and they're now global. I also made these uh, camera variables global. The field of view near and far. That way we can use it in the callbacks without having to uh, pass it around. I also changed the naming scheme of our GSL source code to start out with frag or vert. Eventually we'll have geom for geometry and we'll get into some other ones eventually, but I think this naming scheme is going to be a little better than what we were using before. I also improved the query shader function so that it displays results a little better for our active inputs on our shaders, which is great for our debugging. I updated the cursor so that it is no longer just a circle. As you may have noticed, it is now a eighth of a circle. So that there is not the mouse from Windows. That is when we're drawing with the shader. I kind of like the look of this. It's a pretty simple algorithm. I'll step through real quick here. So basically all we need to take in is the mouse position to this fragment. And of course, as far as vert goes, we're just using the 2D flat one. So as we go into our main, well, we have a radius declared. I could make this uniform too if we wanted to adjust it on the fly. It's actually a great idea. I'm going to do that real quick. This does mean we need to set it all completely in our C++ code. And we're also going to stick with our naming scheme for these uniforms with U radius. And then once we make our shader, we want to be sure to at least set that uh, once to make sure it is ready to go. So we'll use our shader after we declare it here. And then just say cursor shader set float. U radius and 13. So that way we could change this on the fly. Like we could hold this as a variable and change it with a hotkey or whatever we wanted to do with it. So this would give us a little more control, for example. Let me just make sure this works. Of course, we got to update the names and the shaders everywhere it's used. Okay, I forgot to do that. Okay, and now it's running. And there we go. It's a little bit larger than before. Okay, so all this does is it goes through and it checks what quadrant uh, the pixel is compared to the mouse. So everything at the top left, top right, and bottom left is discarded based on these first two. If X is negative, well, first we get the direction from the frag coordinate, like so, just subtract the mouse position. If the X is negative, we're on the left side, so we don't want that. Or if Y is positive, we're on the top side, we don't want that, we're looking at bottom right. And that gets rid of the four quadrants. And this or gets rid of uh, half of the bottom right quadrant. If X is less than what the negative Y is, because Y is definitely negative, then we're at the more right side or the more right quarter of that quadrant. And we discard that as well. And that's how we get the final eighth. This, this cuts it from a fourth to the eighth. So we got rid of this, it would just be the quarter. All right. And then we just color based on that distance and just make a small circle just like before. Um, and we're just using colors black and white. We could use whatever colors we want or take uniforms for colors so we could have all kinds of settings for our mouse 
based on this cursor, however many uniforms we wanted to bring in, or, uh, you know, put up here and mess with. So, pretty cool way you can just get your own hardware rendered mouse and customize it. And that is all the changes, I believe. Okay, well that's it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Special shout out to my patrons for making this episode possible. Let me know if you have any questions about these shaders. Of course, check out the GitHub repo. It's got all this code. I'll push it up and I'll tag video 8 for this exact code. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. Matt from Code Tech and Tutorials, over and out.